was a smooth transition. Oh, not that button either. There you are. Hey, everybody. It is Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa. And today, I'm going to show you how you can paint this easy, abstract Christmas tree in acrylic. It's very vintage feel, very step-by-step, -step, totally explained for all levels of painter. So if you're a beginner and you're new and you'd like to do something fun and easy for the holiday, this would be a really good project for you. On the mic is my husband, John. Hello. He's going to help me bring this lesson to you by making sure that one of our many angles of cameras is zoomed in and pointing at the technique that I'm talking about or demonstrating and so that you can see everything that's going on and be able to create this for yourself at home. Let's go over the materials real quick because I had kind of a crazy week and I get my materials <laughs> pump, pump or done. Can I be made small? We can. Thank you. And over. <laughs> okay. See, this is, this is what he do. He, he shoves me, he nudges me over. In, nudge, 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 nudge. Okay. I think we're nudged in the right place I, I now. I like mini-me. Okay. So this is an 8x8 eight eight surface. Uh, today in watercolor pencil, I've added a wish, uh, uh, healing for Amy's dogs, and just a happy and safe holiday for everyone. I'm just really feeling like that's my overall holiday wish this year is just everyone is safe and happy during the holidays the colors for today are cad red cad yellow burnt sienna phthalo green phthalo blue docks purple and titanium white it's not a lot of brushes i'm going to be using a bright this is a number 10 bright i'm going to use a cat's tongue my archer for cat's tongue but you could use a filbert or a round uh, for this stroke and get the same result because um, I'm going to be working just the toe. I'm also going to use a, a detail brush to sign uh, Q-tips to maybe do little dotted lights if we feel like doing that. And I don't know what it's saying to me. It said something to me. I got my, <laughs> my healthy life choices watch on. Woo! All right. Are you guys ready? To, I, I'm not, I know. I can't see the chat right now, but I know oh, in the chat there's comments the, about the hair. The chat is loving the fire purple. It's blue fire. It's, there's so we, many of it. There's very fire. support of the blue fire. Purple so, fire. Yeah. Well, uh, it's a blue and then purple and then magenta and then there's oranges and it's supposed to get out a little yellow. we got to brighten it up a little bit, but I think we're getting there. <laughs> internet Pretty. hair ideas all They're right dangerous are we on a step is this what we're gonna do we're gonna make a step let's one. make a step a step one of the vintage blue christmas tree so for step one pretty easy pretty fun we're gonna take our bright brush and we're gonna get it a little bit uh wet and then i'm going to load up a little blue and purple together mostly to the blue and i'm going to paint my surface back and forth and I'm going to let it be a little streaky, guys. Yeah? Yeah, to give it kind of like an energetic sky feel. Ooh, did you ever have the days where the canvas just fights the paint? Yeah. Today's well, that day. I mean, I've seen it. I haven't personally experienced this. You, you don't really get on the canvas a lot. He gets more in miniatures. So I'm going back and forth in my Hank. stroke, and I am allowing the variance in the sky. If I get some roughness in the stroke, I'll come back and kind of smooth it out. But I'm not trying to take away the different little kind of variants. Sometimes what will happen is the surface of the canvas is just thirsty. Today it is. Mm -hmm. And it's from the same company I always buy from. You'll find some lots of surfaces just are uh, wily. <laughs> Today's a wily surface. Happens. What happens? Add a little purple to that, little docks purple. So I'm just trying to create kind of an interesting little night feel. And I will do the whole canvas in this step. You can see I'm just, what I'm handling here is again, because my canvas is fighting back, I'm taking the toe of the brushes, the bristles of this brush and kind of working the paint into those little little pop areas you ever have those little pop areas mm -hmm. where it's like i want to be like stars and you're like you don't twinkle like a star so stop it <laughs> stop it this all right just, just getting it back and forth and you're not using a lot of water there I am not, and I'm using a paper towel uh, between my uh, palette and my canvas so that if I have extra water on my brush, I can um, 
kind of take it down. What you'll find is though, I'm getting like, as I get like a drop of water for my Sennelier paint, um, sometimes two. Golden, I might get three or four drops and Holbein, I might get like a half a drop because every paint has a different personality. I was uh, explaining this to my mom last night about the different personalities of the paints that goes way beyond the bodies of them. Now, Even from formula to formula, they have personalities. Lady Jolina asks a really kind of good question. Hmm. Should we just gesso them all to be safe? Well, gesso is just a surface prep and it... Um, it can still leave your canvas thirsty. If if you think of gesso as you altering the surface to have a texture that works best for you. But it's not the same as like, you know how when you paint the surface all over and then it takes paint better? That would be, if you're looking for that, you want to do a couple coats of acrylic paint. If you're looking for the surface to have a smooth tooth in particular texture and take paint more predictably, then you're looking for gesso. Hmm. All right, I'm going to get my brush a little wet. And you're, it's not like you're ever going to go wrong to gesso. I'm going to take a little bit of this across, and it's going to be super kind of light. My canvas underneath is still a bit wet, so you can see it picks up into the color. It contains moisture. Contains moisture. But I don't like just going across and just adding a little bit of a white streak across mm. here and there kind of just some value some interesting personality to what i'm doing you can see Thank i kind of went over that with a damp brush and because the canvas underneath was wet it took those hot spots off all right they say that helps clear up a lot of their questions yeah just it's just one gesso. of those weird product like it doesn't seal the surface so like if you're going over wood it doesn't protect your painting from anything that's in the wood or if you had sharpie it wouldn't stop the sharpie for coming through you know, so it, but, and it comes in grits and it comes in color. So it's wonderful, but you don't have to strictly do that with your surfaces if you don't want to. I never do. Is this a step? This is a step. I want a question. For, for the show, I do not pre just on my canvas. I paint like you guys paint out of the, out of the canvas so that you guys can see me even solving this here. I'm going to dry this though. Are you? Yep. Okay. I'll let them. Well, whoop, whoop, whoop. I'm going to stay here on this step just so that, uh, at the end of the drying, we'll be able to let everybody know. Got to dry your your surface thoroughly. Um, make sure uh, that's just so that as you're painting, it doesn't uh, have any weird drag, things like that. So, okay. I think we're ready to move on You're ready to move on? Yeah. Now, I'm going to take this pointed cat's tongue. This is a pointed filbert, but again, you could use a round... Or a filbert and have perfectly exactly the same results. So you're not under pressure here. On the, you're not under brush pressure in any way. Just to give you an idea of what I'm doing. An idea? Somehow, I think that I cleared off all the chalk for the life. Oh, thing. I have a piece of chalk. Okay. <laughs> but it's not the kind of chalk I, I think It's okay. I can, I can work do, it out. Do, do, do. Oh, okay. Work. That'll work. This is uh, actually... Uh, General's um, pastel sketching chalk. So if you're wondering what this is, this usually comes in a drawing kit. So it's just a higher quality version of chalk that you get for chalkboards. So coming across here, I'm going to come up four fingers and give myself a little mark. I'm going to say there's that much land. Right. Just some little hill. See how I kind of curve that down, curve it down. It's very general. I'm going to make a vertical line to say, hey, I'm going to have a tree. And my tree is going to take up a little kind of rounded diamond shape, a little bit rounded. I want to leave a little room from the top of the tree to my surface. So I might give myself that information. And I do have a traceable for this on the can on the on the um, uh, website now. I'm going to come here and I'm going to get just, I want blue and no docks purple. So I'm going to get just my phthalo blue. I'm going to come under the tree. And get a little more blue as I go down. So this is just a slightly, oh, perfect. That's where I put it. The bandy one. All right, get that there.
And then I'm going to come with a little bit of white. See how I took a little bit of white here and mixed it loosely on my brush? That loose mix on this part to the toe. And then I'm going to kind of hold the brush a little perpendicular to the canvas and wiggle back and forth from the right hand side down towards the center. Coming back, a little bit of snow. And then I'll go ahead and come forward. Down, oh, a finger or so on the right hand side, bringing this sweeping in, back and forth sweep there. Let's come over to the left hand side and kind of ziggle. That's a technical term there, ziggle. A little sort of snow effect here. So very loose, very abstract. You don't want to get too deep in it and you don't want to overwork it. So that's some of the things that you've got for abstract is you don't want to overwork what you've got going on. Uh -huh. Now I do the last touches of my snow after the tree is done. I um, mean, that, that's about catching the white highlights and uh, the glow from the tree. So let's call this, a, we don't have to dry it, but let's call this a step and okay. we're on to the next one. You don't want to get too deep in the snow. Don't get deep into the snow. Anybody catch office? Office. Da, 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 da. So oh, I've never heard of it. What is The Office? A really awesome show that I rewatch periodically. <laughs> so I'm going to take my burnt sienna into my phthalo green. And I'm going to make a very dark green. And I'm going to come to the top of my tree. Make a little sharp little kind of flicking mark. See how that's on the edge of the brush? Yeah. And I'm flicking down. Just there at the top, because it's got to be a little pointed. When I get down about oh, an inch or half an inch, I might bring some of these out and irregular little points. See them coming out? These are little branches. In the center, I can make little curving strokes. That's the center of the tree. Back and forth, little dashes. Where the tree is full, I've got to kind of fill it out. So I want to make sure that that's sort of filled out with green. It will get defined with highlights through the middle. It's really so crazy how that, that brown and green come together to make those very dark, but not, uh, it's definitely got like some green life to it. It's not a shadow. Yeah, it's, it's, it, the, it, the tree is still evergreen. So this would be early in the snow and we're in a lighting where you can still see the green value of the tree. When I come down to the bottom, and well, I do want to kind of piece these a little more particularly coming across. And I do tend to curve up a little bit with my branches here as if it's catching the snow. Again, abstract, vintage tree. And it's really in that shape and feel. I've been just combing uh, so many. So I have so many interesting questions because there's a bunch of artwork that fell out of copyright, right? Mm -hmm. And then there's a bunch of artwork that's so deep and old in the copyright that I think a bunch of people on Etsy just scanned it and are selling it. <laughs> that's what I think is happening. It's really interesting doing research on the different artists and everything um, just, to, just to see. And I'd love to know what you think. I found this amazing tree by an artist, Clarence Gagnon, who's a Canadian Impressionist who is uh, um, just like turn of the century, definitely an open, open source domain. And it's a gorgeous romantic snow train. And I was wondering if you guys would like to do that Sunday. If you would, let me know in the comments. Let me know in the comments live. Let me know in the comments there. John will keep kind of an eye. I should have put up a poll. It's really gorgeous. <laughs> I just know. ran <laughs> into it while researching things. Cinnamon, if given the option, will do a poll to see if you would like a poll on a subject. I like a poll. She's I like the feedback. I like to know what your guys' experience is, so it's very helpful. 
Can I ask you a question? <laughs> well, I don't want to drag you through a painting you don't want to do. And it was real cute. And I, we hadn't done a train in a minute. And it's sort of a simplified train. It's really beautiful. It's impressionistic. It has a vintage feel. It's got all the things we want for the holiday. It's a train? You know? And it gives me a chance to work on my, uh, like my vintage mushroom Santa stuff. So, Is it like a choo-choo train? Yeah, no, it's like a smoking choo-choo train. It's got a beautiful stack of smoke coming off. Okay, and a nice I thought, yeah, I thought you said it was a vintage tree. Yeah, train, we definitely. Train, train, choo-choo train. Yeah. I'm feeling brave. I've decided to train again. You know how I fear the train. I like a train. People who are fans of trains on the internet, also planes, I've learned, have very strong feelings that you represent their favorite trains or planes in an accurate and a, a way too. that they feel is integrity. And when you don't, if you're artistic with it or something... It's very upsetting to them. So I have to always brace myself for feedback. All right, you want to go on to another step? <laughs> Whenever I'm painting a train, I have to be like, and here we go. All right. Let's see here. Because whenever there's deep fandom and deep passion, that is just, you know, a side effect. We don't need to dry. In fact, it's actually great if we don't at this stage because a little bit of this dark color will then blend into the next color up. So I'm going to take, ooh, ooh, what happened here? I don't know. Look at this. I just got my... Ooh, you gooed it. I gooed, my, I gooed myself. I'm going to need a new towel. Okay. Otherwise, I'll goo... So, like, if I put it on the towel and I leave it on my lap, by the end of the show, I'll have little white sploops of paint all over me. <laughs> it's just inevitable. So, John's going to give me another towel because we met me and we know what my struggle is. Woohoo! Look! I'm going to wipe paint on my face. <laughs> so that's how I feel about me. Though it's interesting, this is almost my hair right now. Predictive. All right. I'm going to take the same brush. We're going to pretty much use this brush through. And I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to my earlier green mixture. And it's going to make a nice, gorgeous, lighter color. I'm going to come again. Toe of the brush. And do little flicking strokes there. Okay, hold on just a second. I gotta tell you and what we don't want to do is paint out all the dark. This is four. I didn't, I was that, it's not three. This is step four. four. And you are having a week. Some days. You know, look, we are I, having a week. I'm look, telling you. You expect me to count in numeric order while pushing buttons? No, no, I, I just don't, get. I, I think I've let go of, I, I have a 17 year old, let go of any expectations. I just want to survive the week. I agree. All right, so we're going to continue on. You've got the right step. I pfft, good hope. And I'm going to add little strokes of these highlights. And you can see where it goes into the green that's underneath. That's sort of lovely. I don't want to paint out everything. And I'm just pulling back. Notice that it's just pulling back, being on the toe. Listen, your messy tree is as good as my messy tree. It's just a messy tree. Sometimes you need a messy tree in your life. To help you process I, all the other things. I prefer the wild tree. Uh, you know what? Yeah. I, I really like when the tree people come by and help make the tree all healthy. Mm -hmm. It makes them look really the pretty. The arborist. The arborist, yes. dude. So be a good arborist on your painting. Yeah. My advice here is, and if you can, I think you're zoomed in on it, but if you see that there's little spaces that the lines kind of vary, and I don't, if you were to go back over the same area again, you would lose all this detail. Yeah. Right? So the challenge for you as a new painter is not to make this tree or build up the layers, but to relax with what's happening on your canvas. So be with me. We're going to face that challenge together. We're going to take a deep breath, and we're going to be relaxed with what's happening on the canvas. All right. If I make light marks, they're thinner. And if I make, you know, push down marks, they're heavier. And it is nice sometimes. Now, on the center, I do tend to take them and kind of curve those, make them longer to represent center brushes coming out here. Might add a little bit of kind of upward flare there upward them getting a little the tree's getting a little fat <laughs> <laughs> it's okay a plump tree is a happy tree 
You might just come in there. Sometimes a more green gets into it and becomes a brighter green. And I'll be, you know, I'll still have these colors down here a couple places, but you know, it can be a little darker in this tree. All right. Now let's call that a step. Okay. Do you know what step number it is? I no, but I'll try. How about step five? Step five. All right. Pretty easy step this. You'll like it. We're going to put a lot of yellow into our green, and we're going to go ahead and get some white into that. This is going to be short step. Little touches. Artfully worked through the tree. Ah. A little bit over here. So this is similar to the technique on the white tree. It had different strokes, didn't it? It's it's similar strokes. It's that it's a teardrop stroke. That's why we taught it in the beginner acrylic course. Ah. I did not lie to you. Those strokes, you just some variants of them through your whole painting experience on every brush that you have. So it's good to know them because they come up. Right. Right. So this is just that kind of bright green. It can happen. As the green do. As the green do. Not too bad. You can see I get lighter with it down here. There you go. That's a pretty nice, just general little abstract pine tree when you get up from it. Yeah. You get back from it. Now, before we go into the next step, we do want to dry this because I don't want green getting in my snow. So sort of take this in, look this, look this in. You can see that it's sort of curving into that diamond head that we talked about. You can see there's a general kind of bending of the boughs going up and that those brush strokes also enforces that as we go. So it's a good time to sip your coffee, dry your canvas, and listen to John talk to you about whatever John's going to be talking to you about today. Are we uh, announcing? We're not. Are we announcing the thing today? I or? don't have any idea. I don't either. So uh, watch for your newsletter. Actually, here's what I'm going to say: Watch for your newsletter. I'm not going to say something today. I'm going to say watch for your newsletter. Okay. <laughs> Big news. I'm going to dry. So hi, y'all. How's it going? Thank you for hanging out with us. We really appreciate seeing everybody. We love everyone hanging out. We know there's some technical stuff going on out there in the intertubes, so I see some folks having connection issues. Uh, it looks like we're, we're maintaining a connection here in the upload, so I think those are some local issues, but we will stay on it. Do you dry your canvas thoroughly? Check out our website, www.theartsherpa.com, and in the links in the description down below, both those places contain all the secret materials you'll need, like traceables, reference photos, all the descriptions of stuff, just general things that you'll need. So, mm -mm 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 -mm. Do, do, do. ready? I'm ready. All right. So I'm going to take a You're little. Not ready. Um, I'm not. Step you. Step me. Stepping up. Stepping up. Stepping up. Okie dokie. Now right. you may teach. Now I may teach. All right. I'm going to take a little of my phthalo blue over to that green mixture that I had and get some white into this. Loosely mixed, if you guys can see. And I'm going to come to the tree and make little touches up here. I don't want to paint out everything I've done, and that's, that's the trick. I feel like I'm even on the first tree, I got a little too, woo, encouraged with it. I was like, all the snow. I'm going to... Think about my snow a little bit more this time. All right, so that's a little heavy bow of snow. Just touching that down the tree.
adding snow to our beautiful green tree. But we're not taking out all the colors that we painted in in the first place. Sometimes it's nice to get like a little more blue-green going in the snow. To be honest, Mike, I don't even know what the big news is. We have so many things of big news. I don't even know what she's talking <laughs> he, about, to be honest. He, he kind of knows what it I is, but know. here's the but thing. it could like, be one of three things. We announced Discord real fast. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> like, <laughs> we're not ready for everybody on Discord. So. But we're we are it. now. I think everybody on Discord is all like have. Uh, by the way, we have a Discord chat channel. If you want to hang out with us, continue after the show, and um, we'll have our mods drop a link into the description into here, and I think it may be in the description. But we some we're still not used to. It's not in the description. Did you put oh. it there? No, not then yet. Then it's not there. <laughs> See, we'll get there, but it exists. It exists, and there's like several hundred people in it. <laughs> And you can, uh, what's nice about it is it's kind of like a live chat. It's a bit like a Facebook group without all the, ex the extreme stuff. And it's a live chat and you can share pictures. Uh, yeah, we can share pictures and we can talk and kind of get along with things. And it has sort of a and, different... And eventually we think we can stream from there. And you might be able to share pictures real time in the stream. I don't know. It's thought. It kind of has the hanging out by the water cooler office vibe. It does. So you can see I'm just doing the same thing with the snow, but a little more open. Right? A little more, a little more varied, a little more open. All right. Don't try. Don't, don't speak. Don't try. Don't try. Don't try. We're going to come back. Uh, we're going to do another step, step but step don't have it. I was, I was looking at Discord. Sorry. Hello, Discord people. I just saw, I think it was Luella out there. So I'm going to take Lula. a little yellow and white out together. Loosely mixed. And I'm going to come to the top of this tree, and I'm going to make some little dots. Kind of up and down with this brush. Speaking a little bit about the top of the tree maybe being lighted. I'm going to add some kind of yellow effect of lighting here. This has the yellows. Just a little bit of glow, right? These brush strokes are shorter. I more spread them out. You can add white to them if you want a little bit. If your yellow is so transparent you're not seeing it at all, do add white to it. I am painting uh, Sennelier CAD Yellow Medium, so it's very pigmented and it covers everything uh, very easily. But if you're painting with a different brand, it may have terrible coverage, and that's the fix for that. Mm. All right. The yellow step. Doesn't that look nice now? It's got a little yellow glow. It's a glowing. It does. Not completely done, but it's it's you know it's having a thought there. It's it's doing a thing here. All right, now let's make a step, and we'll come back. We don't have you to try. try. You don't have to try it. Mm -mm. So I have to say, Ashley step. is thoroughly enjoying that you can use gifts on Discord. <laughs> yeah, me. <too. laughs> like, yay, gifts, gifs. It's just whatever animated. it is, it's a better fo form of communication. I'm going to take a little of my CAD red and kind of mix it with my CAD yellow loosely. So it's kind of uh, in, in this sort of marbled space. And I'm going to come through my tree and add some little dashes of that marbled yellow and CAD red. Okay, so this is a very big question. 
How do you know where to put them? So that unfortunately is a combination of experience and developed skills. In school, we talk a lot about design. We do a lot of uh, uh, design um, activities. It's actually why I'm kind of thinking, liking the idea of abstract for uh, acrylic April next year, because then I can teach some design courses. But the idea is to create collections of marks that are not too symmetrical. You don't want them to be too symmetrical, too together. You want open spaces. You want to look at the flow of your eye between what's happening. And then also how it plays to the overall shape. In other words, how does this hold your eye on the canvas? How Are does you it play? painting out a beautiful poetic moment that you already had? Right? Like sometimes something really beautiful will happen and maybe like through there and you don't want to put all your red marks over everything you already liked. It's it's hard to develop that eye to see where something is needed and something is not it really is that's some of the that's some of the biggest work you do early on as an artist is trying to work out your eye so i'm gonna come here you can always use the references we put out the step by steps about seven to ten days after this and you can always use that step by step to go well you know where did she put that because we'll have the steps at each little mark that's why i'm doing this one so separated on all the steps I'm liking this a lot. Like as is, it's just pretty terrific. That's looking really good, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Okay. So now we've got this part of the tree going. It's looking pretty pretty okay uh i'm gonna put out some fluid titanium white paint i don't know where my dotting tool got off to i think it actually is over at my desk but i might have put it any old place it's so hard to say because i move that thing around so i'm going to actually show you the other tip that i always give which is back of the brush i'm always saying you can use the back of a detail brush mm -hmm. so i'll show you using the back of a detail brush <laughs> So let's say it, or toothpick. So let's give another step. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and dip this in white. And maybe inside my, some of my little glow marks. See, I can add a little bit of like a little dot, like it's a light. You can just put them where you want them. So even though it's just the back of a brush and it's not a specialty tool, I can make big dots, I can make little dots, I can make all kinds of dots. It's all good. Put a little more up at the top so it's got a little more glow up there. What are you taking a picture of? Oh! <laughs> John's taking pictures of this girl. That's what he does. Like whenever I'm working on, he's like, snap. <laughs> I'll look over at Discord and I'm like, oh, that's that's secret work, but that's fine. <laughs> All right. So now we have little glowing lights on our on a little Christmas tree. I like that. I think I'm gonna dry it. Cause I want to come back and add another lighter layer. Like looking at this, I feel like it's a little bit cool and I want a little more snow on my tree. Mm -hmm. Just reflectively. Like sometimes I'll look at something and be like, ah, oh, it needs a little more snow. So let's dry it. 
and come I, back and add a little more snow. And yeah, especially with these little dots, you want to make sure that uh, you thoroughly dry because they'll turn into smears and kind of run. So this is a place where it takes a little, little extra, um, you know, drying to make sure it thoroughly gets done. So that's all. You know, and don't forget, there's links in the description down below. You can join Discord where you can see all the fun. You can join our website where you get the, the newsletters and all of the stuff and hear about secret news. And I don't know what else you can learn. This is the touch-up layer. Is this a step? This is a step. We're going to call it a touch-up layer. So layer. like on something like this, anything abstract, you always want to keep evaluating and looking at what it is and where the balance is and what I'm wanting to change is I want a lighter value. I've got great deeps and I'm great, great, great middles, but the only brights I have are the lights. So I do want to come in and add some snow. I'm going to use my cat's tongue again, just on the toe, and I'm going to add some highlights to my snowy branches. There we go. A little more snowy. A little more snowy. A little more heat to it. I'm just painting the white paint and trying to make sure that it feels like there's bright snow. Kind of here and there on the tree. And I can show some different layers. It's all about the layers. It can be very much about the layers. Now, this is one of those ones that's, you know, the techniques are pretty easy to execute. The colors and tools are probably in your studio. Mm -hmm. But what will be your challenge is uh, not letting it get away from you, not overworking. And what my best advice is for you as a beginner is stop at the steps, put it somewhere distant from you, and just look at it a minute and commune with your painting. See, that's got a nice little white layer now. Of snow saying, I could be snow. Coming up at the tip, I'm just making sure they're great right here. Okay. Well, now I feel like we are snowier. <laughs> hmm. We're in the snowy range. We're a little, we're a little wide, but we are snowier. Finding out my trees this lately. So now we're going to add a highlight of snow on top. Ooh. So but this is that'll be a whole nother step. A whole nother step. A whole nother While we're step. stepping, can we use our thin white if we don't have fluid white? Mm -hmm. What's thin white? What do you mean? Thinned white. Can we oh, just yeah, thin absolutely. The white? You can just thin the white. And uh, Hadley wants to know, cat's tongue is a rounded brush edge? Okay. So a cat's tongue is a pointed filbert, and a filbert is a rounded brush edge. So uh, filbert, evolutions. interestingly in French, does, I think, mean cat's tongue. But it's just the filbert comes to a bit of a point. So they're kind of the same and kind of different. Which evolutions. is why for many, huh? Yeah, kind of evolutions. Yeah, which is why for many brush strokes, they work kind of interchangeably. It's just about preference. And you'll be fine with whatever. You really will. Mm. Let's add some highlights to the snow. I'm going to put out just a smidge of yellow away from, because this is so close to the green. And I'm not sure I want any green in my snow. I'll just it's put like a little a yellow out. I know, yellow snow. Allow the jokes to come. 
I'm going to pull some of the white through here. It's okay if the blue gets involved. Get a little yellow. And I'm going to very light pressure, which allows the paint to break. A little yellow. Just so you know, mm. this should be step 11. Did you, did you do it? I don't know if we put that up earlier, but I want to make sure that we <laughs> <Yeah>. did. <laughs> we need some rehearsals. <laughs> So badly. Just so that, like, I want to make sure that we get that confirmed. Okay. But it's okay, because everyone's still hanging out with us. And they, they so know we're going to add not... a little yellow. Like, so this, what this represents loosely in the abstract is the reflections of this wonderful light that can happen, you know, on the snow. I was not hired for my counting skills. I wasn't aware we hired you at all. See? I can't just show up to work one day. <laughs> I just showed up and you got my Woo! glowing personality. So there we go. If you want to lighten, like if you're like, oh, I want my snow to be lighter, you can come back, you know. Right? You can layer this very easily and make changes and it's not even going to hurt it at all. Look at that. So feel like you can make adjustments, change the snow bank, you know, do everything that you need to or want to do. I'm going to I'll just add a little more yellow to the top. Is that's like its star? Mhm. Mm and since he became a slightly pudgy tree, don't don't judge him. Since he became a slightly pudgy tree, <laughs> that way he's got a bit of a glow. <laughs> Oh my goodness, isn't he cute? The, just a oh little Oh my tree. gosh, he's just so... He's, he's like, adorbs. I'm all the tree I can be. He is all the tree he can be. He's living his best tree life. <laughs> <laughs> he's just like, he's like, I'm being the tree I can be and I'm being fabulous. You know that super happy corgi that can barely turn the corner? That tree. This tree is living its full tree. It's living its best tree life. Being its best tree self. If you're here, you can support it. Because <laughs> he's not taking notes. No. Or suggestions. Okay. I don't know. So I'm just, I don't know what's going on with me in the tree. We're signing. Oh, really? Mm hmm Oh, my gosh. Goodness. I'm going to take a little detail brush. I'm going to come over here. That was fast tree. It is. You can do this on cards. This is once you get the uh, basic kind of, we took this real slow. You can do this much faster. So you can do these on cards and on Christmas decorations and wrapping and all kinds of things. Ornaments. Uh, you can do multi multiples, like if you were doing painted rocks. So it's just a good project to have something that you can do very quickly and enjoyably. <laughs> what is going on? I did not. No. Shapa. <laughs> no. I don't know what was happening there, but you know what it isn't? <laughs> It isn't going to be that. That's what it's not going to be. It's not going to be that. No. Sometimes I say no to things. I'm uh, saying... Do you want to dry that and try again? <laughs> yeah, I do. Okay. <sighs> Unexpected. Unexpected bad signature. I'll let you, I'll let you uh, dry that for a second. <sighs> All right, guys. Thank you for joining us. This was an unexpected pleasure to have everyone here today. It's always lovely to see you all. Um, don't forget to do the human things like like, comment, subscribe, and share. Those little <laughs> things always help. Uh, okay. Oh my gosh, that was so funny. Try again. Can you sign your name? I don't know if I can. Let's see. We were going to, going to get choo -choo, under the microscope of Zoom. If I can focus. Don't don't help me now. And the E rounds the bend into an R. The R turns into a P. And there's the A coming in the home stretch. She did it! Rah! I don't know. <laughs>
If you want to reshape your tree, you can come back with the background color and kind of paint in. I'll just show you real quick. As long as it's dry, you can come in with like that background color and kind of make like little shadows coming back if you want. So just know that you can change it if you need to as well. Just go back with what you put in hmm. is the trick. I'll do this side a little bit. You know, so you can come back and you can do tweaks, but I would really advise just to, I'm just showing that because I know I'm going to get that question. Mm-hmm. A lot, but what I would advise is is be okay with the tree that you have, right? And then just paint like ten of them. <laughs> no, because they're easy and fun to paint. I'm it, just blending you know out the adjustments. A, a, a art installation is a grid of Christmas trees. Yes. So, like, if you had six of these <laughs> or nine of these, that'd be great. Like a three by three grid. Oh, it'd be real pretty. And, and you could all- do them in different lights. They could be yeah. evergreens. They could have different colored lights. They could be pink and purple and all the different colors. You just use the technique and just make a bunch of trees. And that would just reflect whatever the tree is in the snow. So if it's a pink tree, put some pink snow down. Hmm. Is what I would do. I was about to drink the paint water. Don't drink the paint water. Maybe that's what's gone wrong today. I I think it's because I'm channeling Michael Scott. Uh, Maybe. But I think that's what she said. That is what she said. Not Pam, I'm telling you, right? We we all wish we were Pam or Jim, but I'm probably closer to Michael Scott. I'm the guy who works in the dock. You said you wanted the background characters that you yeah, don't any see one often. Of the, one of the people that Daryl manages. That's right. I work for <laughs> Daryl. Anybody that Daryl manages. <laughs> I work back there. <laughs> you don't see me as often. As long as none of us are Ryan. <laughs> Probably is interesting to be Angela. Actually, you know who I wish I was? Hmm. Office character I wish I was. Dwight. Yeah. I wish I was Dwight. Yeah. Wrong. I just wish I was dry- <laughs> Dwight. I wish I did any, but I'm not. Any of those things, I am probably Michael Scott, so I accept this reality in my life. We teach art here. Thumb up. If you thought this <laughs> was not the song. <laughs> Thumb up. Subscribe. If you're like, oh, that goof, I want more of it mm-hmm. all week. And also, uh, make sure you go hit a reminder on this Saturday's gorgeous landscape painting. Because I got a, oh man, that is just, it is the painting, painting, painting. Um, Let me know if you wanted to paint the train or not. Mm. Take care of yourselves. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at an easel real soon. Bye-bye.